Hi, uh, we're going to continue uh, where we left off in the last screencast. We built a phone book application. Uh, I added a uh, home page uh, and a simple link so that when we deploy this, uh, we won't have the default page up there. And let's talk a little bit about our options for deployment. Option number one uh, is, that we're going to talk about is Heroku. Uh, that is uh, this site here. So it doesn't take me to my account page. Uh, and you can go through here and look at all the different options uh, and what you can do with it. Uh, you can deploy several different uh, frameworks to it, Ruby, Java, uh, Node, Python, Clojure, Scala, also on Java, uh, also same for Clojure. And uh, it's, a, it's a great platform to get started out with. Uh, I usually opt for a VPS or my own server uh, just because I'm comfortable with uh, server management and my applications usually require running uh, several different applications that I want to run locally uh, for various reasons and that's more difficult to do on Heroku or they just won't let you or I want to use local storage for uh, the time being and uh, those things aren't possible on Heroku. Uh, you have to use other, uh, other steps to do that. So what I'm going to show you today though is how to take a SQLite uh, Rails application and transform it to something we can put on Heroku. And I don't do this on a daily basis, so uh, this is going to be fairly unscripted, and I think that'll be a benefit to you because we're just going to go down the getting started guide. You'll see the problems that I run into, and then when you run down the getting started guide, you'll know where to look. So, first off, we need to um, install the Heroku tool belt. When you click on that link, it'll take you to this page. Uh, install it for your platform of choice, uh, whatever you're using. Uh, I just had to clone that here on Linux, uh, or not clone, but run that command. Uh, and then for uh, OS X and Windows, you just have a binary to install. Once you've done that, you can check to make sure you have it installed with uh, Roku version. And that'll tell us it's installed. And then you'll also need to log in. You put in your uh, account uh, email and your account password. And uh, you may have to do a couple things with keys. Uh, and it'll upload your key for you. Follow the directions there and you should be great. So uh, this is for starting an application up from scratch. We're not going to do that. We already have a. Uh, SQLite database uh, and we've already built an application here so we don't need to follow that. Uh, let's uh, just go down the, uh, the list of instructions here and see what we need to do. So Heroku Gems uh, on Rails 4 uh, they did away with the plugins uh, and uh, in my opinion that's a great thing but now uh, Heroku was relying on that and so now we have to add this uh, this gem into our application in order to uh, re regain that functionality so down here at the end I am going to uh, uh, actually I'm not going to do it at the end for one reason up here uh, I am going to do a group right here for production and uh, then do and then I'm going to add this gem and add that gem right there into production uh, you can do it either way but I'm going to add a couple other things here so that's why I wanted to do it there uh, so do that, 
bundle or bundle install. And now we need to use Postgres. Uh, I, I definitely 100% agree with uh, what they said here about using Postgres in development and in production. Rails will let us, um, as long as we use uh, agnostic uh, SQL queries, uh, we can, uh, you and anything that conforms to the SQL spec, uh, Postgres lets you do some special things. Uh, and so if we use any of those special Postgres features, we won't be able to use them in development or vice versa, uh, depending on our environments. We're going to set it up for, we're going to try to set it up for uh, just using Postgres uh, in production and SQLite in, um, in development. Uh, and that should be sufficient for this introduction here. So in order to do that, though, um, I'm going to do gem pg in the production environment. And I am going to um, kill that line and do group. Development and test, I want to use SQLite. <coughs> All right. So, um, and if we bundle, it should do the same thing there. Okay. Now, uh, we do need to have uh, a config file for uh, Postgres that's different than SQLite. So we need to add that under config database. Actually, we have, um, have this already here, except Get rid of all that and and add the Postgres options here. So we're going to name it. Uh, we are calling our application uh, phone book. So we're going to do. Book production, phone book. just like they have here. Uh, so we just changed it specifically for the production environment. Uh, And we'll see what we have to do for our password in production here uh, as we go along, I'm sure. And we just bundled, so we should be good there. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to add a Ruby version to the, uh, to the gem file. I like to do this up near the top. Uh, we need to specify it to run at Ruby 2.0 and I would probably also add the patch version but we'll go with their example for now. Uh, so store your app in Git which we have already done we'll commit that uh, and then we need to create an application. So let's um, bounce over here, get status, bundle again, bundle, okay, and then get add, commit, date for uh, 
Okay, so we are good to go. Then we do Heroku Create. Now you only have to do this once. We just need to create an application on Heroku. And then we need to uh, check uh, with that command to see that that um, Heroku, this remote, uh, endpoint was added to our config file which it was so then we need to uh, deploy our code and migrate our database and let's see if this works I have a feeling we're going to run into some issues here so git push Heroku master git push So it's running through its deployment script right now. Found the Rails app, found the version. Uh, that would throw a big, uh, a big uh, warning if you uh, did not put that in there. And then it's installing all of our dependencies uh, from our gem file. One thing to note is that uh, I am not using the Ruby Racer. I have Node.js installed locally. Uh, if you do use Ruby Racer, you need to um, only use it in the local environments, not uh, not up on the server. Uh, it causes all sorts of, of issues. Uh, they want you to install it. They have it installed locally. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see. We're almost done here. Okay. And now I think we can do. Um, so now let's. I'm going to show you some errors um, that succeeded successfully, but Heroku open. Let's take a look and see. It should open. Our application uh, and the application is now live uh, however we're gonna get an error when we go here and if we look uh, at what the error was uh, we got a 500 error which means there's something wrong with our application uh, we can use a couple of features that they have here we can view the logs by just typing oops uh, Roku logs and, and I think we can do tail and then we can go in there and let's make this a bit bigger with the large text on the screen there and when we reload we can see ah oh, we got a 500 we started to get and Postgres these are going to look a little different than SQLite uh, relation entries does not exist and so that's telling us to do uh, what what the getting started article said to do we need to do, run this command right here Heroku run rake db migrate this section is exactly the same as you would run locally uh, and then we're using Heroku run 
in order to um, run that command up on the server. And so now uh, we should be able to go to this page and poof. My name and create an entry and back. There we go. Our application works. Uh, a couple other things. You can uh, scale your application from the command line and some of this will cost you money. Uh, so by all means uh, you can uh, scale that up and you will need to scale it up once you once you want to go into production uh, for real I'll see what uh, Heroku PS for processes tells us that we have one process how long it's been running looks like uh, we've seen Heroku open uh, we've seen that we can tail the logs Again, we can scale. Uh, another interesting one is that we can run uh, the console. So just like uh, before, we uh, prepend uh, Heroku run, and then we run the command, and we can go up here and as soon as it connects and loads our environment, then we can do entry dot last my name and we can do destroy here and oh well that's our local version and our on direction we can uh, we can now see that we destroyed our entry there exit to get out of there just like normal all right what other fun things can we do here uh, we can also use a separate a specific um, web server. Uh, this one uses Unicorn, uh, which uses the parser from the original Mongrel, or one of the first uh, Ruby web servers, Mongrel. Um, that's got a whole interesting history in itself. Uh, I would suggest taking a look through this uh, and modifying their config file to, to match what you need to do. Uh, it also talks about setting up uh, processes and uh, with, via a proc file and all of those things are great uh, uh, for you to do um, I would suggest doing that maybe I'll do a separate screencast on specifically getting unicorn uh, which is one of my favorite web servers running on on um, Heroku uh, also, you could also look at Puma as well, uh, but I'll leave that as an exercise to you. Uh, Webbrick, which is what we're using right now, uh, is going to be great for what we need to do, which is just uh, testing our application at this point and deploying it and letting other people use it. All right, there you go. Um, highly suggest taking a look at Heroku, look at their pricing, look at their options and see if it is a good option for you. Uh, and their support is great, their documentation is great. Uh, hope this helps you uh, get on your way. Thank you for watching.